Hello everybody and welcome to this video about multiband compression and dynamic EQ. So we're gonna talk about these tools and why they're so useful. Now uh, they're very similar tools and we're gonna talk about the differences in, uh, later in the video. But for now let's just talk about dynamic EQ and when and why you would use it. So the thing is not all instruments are consistent in their tonal balance, right? We talked about tonal balance. And you will see that some instruments just kind of wobble or they just kind of have resonance peaks. So dynamic EQ is great to tame these resonance peaks. And let me just show you exactly what it does. So we have this bass, right, in the Mandagora. And you can see that it's fairly inconsistent. I mean, if you look at the waveform here, you can see there is some bigger peaks. And I don't necessarily want one peak to just crush through the mix and be like 6 dB louder than the other ones. I sort of want to have more consistency. But, so you could say, why don't you just compress, Joel? Well, I could just compress. But uh, the thing is, the problem is only happening in the bass here. I don't necessarily have issues with the mids. It's more like a bass focus problem. Right, the mids are fairly similar all the way through. So what do you do in the situation? Well, you use dynamic EQ. And dynamic EQ is just going to act like a, a multiband compressor. It's just focusing on that particular band of frequencies. And depending on how I set the threshold, uh, which is here, and how I set the range, which is essentially the ratio, like a compressor, is going to kind of react more or less, uh, depending on how loud the incoming signal is. So that's just what it is. Um, it's just a way to sort of turn an EQ into a compressor, if that makes sense, and you have that range, uh, which is where the, the compressor is going to be able to act. So more dB, more compression equals bigger range. So that's what the dynamic EQ is, guys. Now, when do you want to use it? Well, of course, it's going to be mostly for resonant instruments. Um, now, what I mean by resonant instruments could be, for example, I mean, this bass is a very good example. Or you could have other instruments like this, maybe. Let's see if I use one. Yes. So this instrument is, it sounds fine, but there is certain mid-range frequencies. Let me just grab another EQ, which are, like for example, this one is a good example. Like right at the transition, it does like, like right? And sometimes this can be distracting. Um, usually it's going to be the lower instruments because uh, the thing is low frequencies or low mid frequencies are physically longer than high frequencies. So in a room, in a recording, they have more chance to bounce around the room for longer. You know, just like when you're outside and you hear someone uh, play music in their car, and when they blast music in their car, you just hear the bass. Well, that's because the bass kind of lingers around more, it's less absorbed by materials, uh, which means it kind of propagates more far away. So what you get is you get more chance uh, of the lower frequencies to bounce around, and it creates resonances, you know, that can come back and phase. And it's this phasing which creates this wobbliness, right? So you will find it in Chelly as well. Uh, you're probably familiar with the Tinaguo uh, cello library or, you know, any kind of live recording of a cello actually might have this issue. You will notice that as you go lower in the range of the cello, you might have certain notes that somehow just resonate a lot, maybe around two, three hundred hertz. And you have this like, do, 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 do. It's just like very muddy resonances, right? So this is what dynamic EQ is for. It's for uh, flattening this sort of problems at the frequency level without sort of interfering with other frequencies, which might be fine. Uh, I mean, the air of the violas, it doesn't need any dynamic compression, like a... Right? Uh, so yeah, guys, that's about it. So in the mixed deconstructions, you're going to see more examples of where I use dynamic EQ and why. But in general, you will notice that it's mostly in the low mids and the bass. Uh, sometimes in the highs, you could have inconsistent highs. But mostly low mids and bass to sort of tame these rogue resonances, which could cut through the mix and, you know, create imbalance. So here's another example where we have a synth, but uh, it's a little bit too resonant. So you can see here on this particular note, it's very dynamic. The waveform is very big here. And uh, if this was too much, it could unbalance the track tonally. So...
So here it's fine, but if this range was too loud, check this out. See, it would just be a sudden kind of bump, um, and that would sound weird. So yeah, uh, that's for this kind of use cases that you want to use dynamic EQ. Okay, so now let's talk about multiband compressors. Uh, so first of all, the difference between a dynamic EQ and a multiband compressor is pretty simple. So a dynamic EQ is more like an automation um, of a, a bell cut generally or a shelf. Um, so, you know, it's not really separating the signal into bands. Uh, it's just like moving the curve, you know, as it detects the like the sound is getting loud uh, around this frequency region. Now, uh, if we take a multiband compressor, it's going to be slightly different uh, internally. The multiband compressor is going to separate the signal into full on bands. Uh, so if I just create, so I have one band here. Uh, as you can see, if I just solo it, this is how it looks. If I just create another band, see, that is how it looks. And there is full on low pass and high pass filters. So internally, it's kind of like that when you separate the bands. Instead of just being a bell cut, uh, that's going, going to sort of move uh, based on how much you dynamic range you, you sort of set, like a dynamic EQ that it works like that. A multiband compressor is going to full on split the signal into bands. Um, so what that means is that each band is really independent, uh, fully independent. In fact, you can solo it like that. And it's really splitting the signal completely. And also each band has its own uh, compressor, fully featured compressor with all the settings. So attack, release, ratio, knee, look ahead, uh, internal and external side chain. I mean, most good multiband compressors have this. So what that means is that uh, you have more functionality with the multiband compressor, but there, are also there is also downsides. So sure, you have more flexibility, you have more parameters uh, generally compared to the enemy EQ, but because it is full on high pass and low pass filters, you can't be as precise. As you can see, this is kind of uh, how hard I can go on this one. And with other multiband compressors, it's even less. So you can't really make a surgical dynamic EQ cut to address the resonance. And also technically it's not as clean because this is fully uh, splitting the signal with filters. So even though you can't really hear it, there is more phase shift. And if you use really extreme high pass and low pass filters, you could potentially get more ringing and some artifacts. Now with good digital EQs, you won't hear that really. So think of this as just being a bit less narrow than dynamic EQs. You have a bit less flexibility there. Uh, but now you have more flexibility in terms of the envelope and uh, the kind of envelope shaping tools because this is a full-on compressor, which means if you want to do a multiband limiter, for example, you can with a multiband compressor. You just put the ratio to infinity, a super short attack, super short release, and now you can do something that really kind of grabs the peaks, for example. And this is exactly what I did in this particular spot. I had this clicky drum here. And I wanted to control all the little uh, stick high end, right? But I wanted it to only catch the, the clicky ones. And they're not all clicky. So if I just show you uh, without the multiband compression, you know, some of them just get too bright for me. So I just wanted things to be more even. Uh, let me make it more dramatic. Right? In here, how the click is really kind of being compressed, but only the ones that are really too clicky are being compressed. So it evens out the clickiness of all these hits. So that's really the good thing about multiband compression. The fact that you have a uh, full-on compressors per band, which means you can really use these settings like that. With dynamic EQ, of course, you have ratio, which is the range. Technically, you can have the uh, you can make a stronger ratio by adding more range. But I mean, some dynamic EQs have attack and release, but they're probably not gonna have side chain, and they won't have look ahead, which means you can't really like make the compressor react in advance to sort of grab the peaks even harder. So if if you need to do special dynamic control uh, or like even expansion, multiband expansion, uh, for example, in the DNA mix deconstruction, I'm using the low band here. Uh, you will see I'm using the low band to add punch to the drums. So I'm using an expander uh, like uh, like that. Well, that's, you will see in the mix deconstruction of DNA. Uh, but I'm just using this to sort of add punch to the drum. So it's, it, it, you know, for that I need a precise control over the, the attack and release, uh, the knee, the ratio, because I want to be sure that the behavior, um, the dynamic behavior will be just like I want. 
so guys, now that you understand the difference between uh, a multiband compressor and a dynamic EQ, just to sum things up, dynamic EQs are really better for uh, resonance control, really shaping the turn like that. Uh, now, multiband compressors, they really full on split your signal with uh, uh, filters, low pass, high pass, and it really splits it into individual bands. Uh, but the cool thing is that you have all the controls of a compressor, including sidechain generally. So if you want to really kind of uh, reshape the signal uh, like a compressor can, then it might be the best choice. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. Very similar tools, but slightly different. Okay guys, so I guess that's it for the multiband compression and dynamic EQ video. So I will see you in another one. Cheers!